everyone. Welcome back to Brewbound's continuing coverage of how the beer industry is adjusting to the impact of the novel coronavirus disease, COVID-19. My name is Justin Kendall, and I am the editor of Brewbound, and I'm in my studio apartment. And if you can hear my dog, he is playing with a, a toy underneath me, so he might make a cameo here. But I'm joined today via Google Hangout by Jester King Brewery founder and owner Jeffrey Stuffings. Jeffrey, how are you hanging in there? Uh, we're making we're making do uh, as best we can out of a tough situation. Uh, it's been a real rough, uh, you know, two ish weeks now, and um, yeah, just every day is kind of a new surprise. And so we're we're doing our best. So we're two weeks into this thing for you, um, and as a destination brewery in Austin, Texas, just about all your your business is on site, right? That's right. Yes. As I was mentioning before we started recording, um, we've made that decision as kind of the prudent thing to do, to not have to uh, be so uh, tied up in kind of the hyper competitive nature of whether it be, you know, draft beer sales and tap handle wars or shelf space battles and content to kind of allow people to come out to us. Um, you know, the, the growth that we've done has not been in terms of production volume, but has been in terms of the on-site experience with uh, a restaurant and uh, a farm and a inn and a private event hall, um, which I think under normal circumstances have been wise decisions, but under this context, all that is is just out of play right now. You know, I was talking to some folks about this and if you would have asked us on probably March 1st or back in February, what the best model for a craft brewery would be, it would be all of, you know, it would be the tap room model. It would be direct sales to consumers. And in a matter of two weeks, it's like that whole thing got flipped on its head. So yeah. how, how much of your business, I, I guess, uh, has gone away overnight basically so far? Yes, it's been about uh, overall, and we're still kind of sorting through what the distro picture is going to look like. Uh, granted, distro is a pretty small part of our business. It's about you know, one one fifth of our business. And um, so far, it's hanging in pretty well for us. Uh, but overall, we've lost about two thirds of our business, our, our revenue um, in a very, very short period of time. So it's been uh, dramatic. Um, you know, we had uh, a lot of uh, cooks, uh, dishwashers, servers, bartenders, who we've had to let go, unfortunately, and hope to rehire as many as possible um, once we're able to return to normal. But then again, you know, it's hard to have any idea of when that's going to truly be. Um, I think, you know, we may, not to get ahead of your question, but, you know, we may um, be able to have some semblance of normalcy in the months ahead. But to be like truly back to the way things were, I think it's going to be a long time. Um, yeah. Well, and even when we get whatever the new normal looks like, because to me, that's unclear. Like, I, I don't know how willing consumers are going to be to to jump right into going out to tap rooms or or even restaurants, you know, at, at this point. Or maybe we all get sick of being cooped up inside. But, you know, from everything that we we keep hearing about COVID-19 is this is just the first wave, you know, right. and, and once we get through the first wave, there will be another wave after that because we don't yes. have a vaccine yet. And so... I can't even imagine the challenges of being a business owner and having to, you know, react to a pandemic, you know, a, a disease that is unpredictable in how it's going to affect, you know, your everyone. I mean, the the you're you're absolutely right. I mean, the long and short of it for us is we've kind of had to create a new like survival mode business plan where um, huge swaths of our business are are, are gone. Um, and it looks at this point as though we can get some help from our banks and the SBA. I mean, for instance, the SBA announced as part of the CARES Act that it's going to do, uh, you know, cover your payments and interest for um, six months. And, you know, that'll be hugely helpful. But we're basically trying to figure out, like, how we can survive as a business for, you know, like you mentioned, you know, potentially even like 12 to 18 months in a, in a state that's just a fraction of, of where we, we were just just weeks ago. Um, you know, it's that old adage, you know, uh, hope for the best, plan for the worst. And I mean, that's what we're doing now is just trying to 
survive is just kind of like, again, this like hollowed out uh, business compared to where we were. Well, even with the SBA disaster relief loan, I, I, is, there are no guarantees, right? That's an application process that could take three to four weeks and you'll find out. And even then, you know, it's unclear like how much money you'll, you'll receive, right? Yes. Yeah. That, that, I mean, I saw as part of the CARES Act, I think it was 10 billion for uh, the uh, economic injury disaster relief loan. Uh, and, you know, for obviously for an economy our size, that's, that's not very, very much. Um, so that has me nervous, uh, you know, looking at stuff about how, uh, you know, the lobbyists were able to kind of raise the cap under the CARES Act for the, uh, the uh, payroll protection plan loan to, you know, companies of 500 employees. So I expect that funding to go very, very fast as, as well. So yeah, I, I think, you know, we are looking at a scenario where it's just going to be like, grab what you can while you can, and then figure out how to make it work. So um, yeah, I think it, I think it, it's going to get a lot uglier, both from an economic and a healthcare standpoint before it starts getting better. So what type of relief would help you and other small brewers? So what has been proposed, assuming that it is funded and, and isn't just this grab what you can scenario I just mentioned ago, a little bit ago, um, you know, two and a half times our payroll as it was judged from February 15th uh, for the, I think that was 18 days. I should be able to quote it better off the top of my head, but, but uh, for the 18 days going forward is significant. I mean, that'll like essentially cover you know, probably like, you know, 10 pay, 10 payroll periods, which, which is, which is huge. Um, I guess, you know, where I worry is, you know, if it starts going well beyond that, where, you know, maybe there's some easing of restrictions, but we're not really, you know, anywhere near back to full strength for, uh, you know, until the fall. And then, like you said, maybe there's another round of restrictions that happens in the fall once, you know, obviously no one knows, but I mean, there is the worry that that we are facing uh, another, like you said, another round uh, next fall or winter and could be in the same situation again. So um, we really are trying to just like find a way where we can just kind of limp through um, for anywhere from 12, maybe even to 18 months before, you know, perhaps we're back to some new normal. What uh, what are you hearing as far as from trade groups or industry leaders as far as what more help could be on the way? Uh, so far, really, I mean, all I've I've heard uh, is the uh, you know the the seven A loan, the uh, PPP loan, which you know again is two and a half times your payroll as judged over that kind of you know eight week period leading into this, um, and then the um, yeah the economic injury disaster relief loan from the SBA, which um, is, I mean, if it's funded, it could be quite significant, you know, being able to borrow up to $2 million at a very you know, low rate for a long-term period. So that, that, that could be huge. And, and if, if properly funded, not just for us, but, but for a lot of folks, it, it is discouraging to, you know, in the result of a crisis that was not of, of any brewers doing to have to potentially take on debt or more, more debt. That's disheartening. Uh, you know, we had uh, taken out SBA loans in uh, 2018 to expand our on-site experience. And um, so to have to pile on more to that is would, would be a frustration. But, you know, in, in this kind of survival mode state, then, you know, whatever, whatever it takes. Uh, there's, there's smaller grants that have, uh, that are out there, um, some from the government. Uh, you know, the James Beard Foundation uh, had a grant, the um, Oh, the Texas uh, Restaurant Association had a grant. Uh, Facebook apparently is going to be doing a grant here soon. Um, so there are other bits of, of smaller help. Um, you know, what our local guild has been doing is been trying to get it so Texas brewers can deliver and ship. Um, you know, Jester King in particular, we, we've always, you know, you know, focusing on farmhouse ales and spontaneously fermented beers. It's always been this kind of niche style that, uh, is resulted in us trying to basically sell a little bit of beer in a, in a lot of places outside of our own, you know, on-site experience. And so we have developed uh, fans uh, in other parts of the country and think that if we were able to ship direct, it, that we would get some traction with that, but uh, it's, it's illegal. And um, it doesn't look like at this point, there's going to be any help on that front. So you know, I am, uh, well, I'm grateful that brewers in other states have the right to ship and deliver. I am very envious of them right now. 
Well, you beat me to it because I was going to say you've been a major advocate for getting the right to ship beer. So I didn't know how far along those efforts might have been in Texas or if there was a, any give as far as possibly getting that law changed. Um, you know, I spoke with uh, or corresponded with our, our guild director just this morning and it, it appears uh, stalled right now. Um, you know, whether we get some help on that front may happen, but it doesn't look like it's going to be soon. And it's already been you know, two weeks. And, uh, you know, some breweries have, have gone ahead and just started to deliver regardless of the law. So it definitely feels like this kind of Wild West uh, scenario going on in Texas right now. It, well, I think that's everywhere, too, because they're, they're, we're hearing reports even here in Massachusetts of people delivering when that's not a right yet. So I, I don't know how that works itself out. Yeah, I was I was curious uh, if if Massachusetts had gotten some some relief on that front yet, but it, it sounds like no. No, it hasn't. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I I I was going to say too, like a lot of other brewers, you you've instituted curbside pickup. You, you're doing a drive through. So, how important are those moves, and how sustainable are they for the business? So far, they've been uh, very important. Um, you know, I mentioned, you know, trying to limp along in this, you know, reduced state. And so far the curbside has make it, made it where so long as, you know, the SBA and banks are off our back temporarily that I believe we can, uh, subsist for, for a while, you know, uh, throughout the rest of the year, if, if, if necessary. Um, but, um, uh, yeah. How so? I guess the, the the second part of that question: How sustainable uh, will the first uh, two weeks compare to you know what comes from here, where I think we have seen a good d deal of sympathy? Um, you know, I don't know. I, I presume as time goes on, more and more people will feel more and more uh, economic pain, just as the shock waves and ripple effect goes through our economy. So. You know what are curbside sales going to look like in a month or, or two months or you know however long it may may be. So I do have concerns on that front. Um, one thing we've started doing, and it's it's funny, you know, um, you know I uh, follow the you know the, the don't drink beer blog, and um, you know uh, the, uh, he was joking about how like brewers will send you sell you like uh, a rare one off barrel in like uh, you know whatever format you want right now and. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of truth uh, to that. Where um, you know we're doing pre-releases of beers, we're allowing proxies, um, just stuff we've never done before. You know, removing all bottle limits whatsoever. You know, just stuff like that, um, just to try to keep uh, you know as much money coming in right now as possible to get by. So, um, yeah, we're having to kind of be creative on that front as as, as well. Are you finding those efforts have been fruitful so far? Yes, um, doing some pre-releases, some seller releases. That's that's been those have been some of our, our big, especially not being able to deliver or ship. Those have been some of our biggest uh, money-making days uh, so far. So we plan to keep keep doing them. Um, as far as other highlights, our bread, our bakery. Uh, we have a small bakery at Jester King. It's it's never been busier. Um, you know, we're at max capacity right now and have started even wholesaling some of our bread. Um, so we'll see how that continues, but, but bread is very much in demand. Um, but, uh, so far I would say, you know, curbside has, has exceeded our expectations and, and just the mere fact that we're open seven days a week now, as opposed to, uh, four, uh, has also had an impact as, as well. So, you know, still doing just a small fraction of what we did before, but, you know, being open seven days a week has, has stemmed that, uh, to a certain extent. How have you changed your packaging mix since this started? Are, are there other moves that you've made there? Yes. Um, so mostly all draft has been uh, put on hiatus. Um, you know, we're filling a couple kegs off of each packaging run so we can do crowlers or just trying to, you know, have a little bit of beer uh, in our cellar if and when, you know, our tasting room and kitchen can, can reopen. Um, but uh, yeah, just having to uh, do a lot more in the way of bottles and, and cans proportionally, and um, which is also unfortunate from a brewer's perspective, I think, because you know 
draft beer served on site is the highest margin we see across our whole company when it comes to beer sales and, you know, packaging costs are, are, are high. So, I mean, everyone I think is taking a, a margin hit, right? Every brewer at least is seeing a margin hit right now by having to, to can everything. And, you know, we don't have a, we have a, a, a small bottling line at Jester King, but we don't have a canning line. We, we use uh, mobile canning uh, and uh, which is a new thing for us, by the way, we started mobile canning our beer um, in February. So just, just before this all hit, um, which was, I guess, a somewhat fortuitous coincidence for, for, for us. Um, but you know, great even timing. We, Absolutely. Yeah, great yeah, timing. Yes, exactly. That was, that was lucky. And, uh, yeah, we started doing crowlers in February as well, which, um, again, was lucky timing. Um, but, uh, I mean, our mobile canning company has already said like they're having, you know, seeing some back stocks of, of at least 16 ounce cans starting to, to develop. Um, and then, you know, talking to other brewers, um, you know, they're backlogged on their, um, crowler availability it sounds like at least a couple weeks yeah um yeah all ramping up production is what we've heard so or what they've told us yes and then um we've so we um i would say in terms of our brewing schedule we've uh cut back a little bit on our not not a little bit we've, we've just wholesale eliminated some of our more sessionable uh batches of beer like for instance some of our like you know Kolsch inspired beers or wit beer inspired beers. Um, we've just nixed those from our schedule because those have been mainly uh, heavy draft beers that are really just like for everyday drinking in our tasting room and kitchen. And uh, we've focused more on, I don't know, kind of hyper whale beers, if you will, because those have done pretty well at our curbside. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I think I'd read that you'd move more to a sort of special release type of beers for that? Yes, exactly. Uh, so we're still filling barrels. We're still emptying barrels. We're uh, still making, you know, higher gravity beers or beers that are re-fermented with fruit uh, or very, you know, hop driven beers. Um, but, you know, just kind of our, you know, everyday uh, kind of just sessionable beers, low gravity beers, um, basic saisons and hoppy farmhouse beers have been kind of put on hiatus, unfortunately. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, sort of a crowler uh, shortage that some others have hit. Uh, have you run into any, any bumps yourself in the supply chain thus far, whether it, it's ingredients or cans or bottles or whatever? Um, other than cans and crowlers, which technically we haven't seen a, a stop on yet, but have just kind of heard that it's coming. Um, no, uh, our malt supplier uh, has been very helpful and, you know, our, our uh, malt supplier, I'm, I'm sure, is feeling this uh, uh, Blacklands malt uh, out of, out of uh, Leander, Texas. I'm, I'm sure this is tough for them as well, but they've been extremely helpful and, have, and been there for us. Our, um, you know, a lot of our fermentations are with uh, wild yeast that we just culture from the land and air around the brewery. Uh, but we do do some um, uh, pure culture ferments as well with a uh, yeast lab out of San Antonio called Community Yeast Labs, and they've been great for us. Um, but uh, but I have started just through the Grapevine, I've heard that some of the yeast companies are starting to uh, feel some stress as well. I don't know if that's because of reduced batches. I mean, it seems like everyone I've talked to is has slowed down their their production schedule, mm -hmm. uh, as 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 have we. Um, but overall, so far, we haven't had uh, difficulty finding the ingredients to keep going. So, wh what more can folks do to sort of help out at this time? Yeah, the, the, the two big things for me uh, would be, you know, purchase from small independent local breweries, you know, true true craft breweries, uh, purchase from them right now. I mean, the, the multinationals are going to be fine, I'm sure, uh, when this is all said and done. Uh, so just, yeah, just, just support uh, local independent, small local independent like you never have before. And then as far as uh, Texans, uh, we ask them to please sign our petition. If you just go to the texascraftbrewersguild.org and sign the online petition for Texas brewers and brew pubs to be able to uh, ship beer and uh, deliver beer, at least temporarily, uh, that would be a, a huge help. So those are my, my two asks uh, right now of people. Well, I think that's a great way to end it. And that's, you know, go do it, people. <laughs> so yeah. thanks for the time, man. I know you got to hit it. So I really appreciate you taking time out. Oh, my pleasure, Justin. Good to talk to you. Anytime. Good talking to you.